Well, my favourite scientist is Richard Feynman. He encapsulates the excitement about being a scientist and do, doing scientific research. He was born in uh, 1918, I believe, uh, in, uh, in the United States. Uh, and he was very much encouraged and supported by his parents. And his parents were always keen, both his father and his mother, that uh, he should develop an interest in, in science. But they did that in a very inspiring way. They would often encourage him to question uh, and rather than, than teaching him facts, they would actually teach him the ability to inquire. And, and one nice example that sticks in my mind is that when he came home from school, his parents would regularly ask him what he asked rather than what he learned. Uh, and so that, I believe, was a, a key factor in stimulating his, his curiosity. Uh, but he really developed, he was a brilliant mathematician, really developed an interest in, in theoretical physics. And he... Um, he was, uh, as a young researcher, he actually became part of the Manhattan Project at Los Alamos, working on the uh, development of the atomic bombs. And then after the, um, the war, he went to Cornell University, and I think it was then Caltech after that. But his, his real, I suppose, one of his major scientific achievements, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1965, was developing quantum electrodynamics. Well, quantum electrodynamics was, as you can imagine, the development of, of quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics developed during the, the early part of the 20th century. Quantum electrodynamics developed out of a requirement to um, integrate quantum mechanics um, with relativity, but then also to understand the quantum mechanics of particles moving in a field. And a nice example is how particles might interact through the exchange of light. And I think that there's a particular aspect of the way he approached his work that has uh, intrigued me. It's described in a conversation he's had with an artist friend who, who pitied him because um, his view of a flower would be constrained by wanting to understand the science by it. And Feynman points out that you know, as, uh, what we can see is the shape of the flower and recognize its beauty, but as a scientist, you can actually understand the detail about how the, the cells are structured and how the plant operates. Uh, and that's, uh, that's always resonated very strongly with me because one of the great privileges of being a scientist is the ability to see things that, that are not accessible otherwise. The Feynman diagrams. Well, this is a nice schematic representation of um, particles and how those particles might interact. And at the heart of quantum electrodynamics is actually determining the, all the possibilities for different interactions between particles with the emission of, of photons. But they, they became sort of quite iconic in their own right. I mean, they're still incredibly powerful tools in particle physics for looking at uh, complex interactions. But they, they did develop something of an, an iconic state system themselves. And indeed, Feynman had a van that was decorated with Feynman diagrams. When he was working on the Manhattan Project, he was concerned about the security of the document storage of the Manhattan Project. And in order to prove the point, he would actually um, break into safes. He, would, uh, he read a lot about safes, and he was able to break into safes. And rather than take anything, he'd leave a little note in the safe and then lock it up again. It, he's an inspiring individual, I think. I, it's just uh, you're reading his books, and uh, the more you learn about him, you realize that actually how he was really driven by curiosity to understand science and, and to share that, that understanding. You know, for somebody who works in, in the university, those are the, the, the things that really drive you, is, is the, the wanting to, to understand and then to communicate effectively and, and, and with enthusiasm. And, and Feynman did that better than anybody else does. Lift off, lift off of the 25th space shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. In, in 1980, the early 1986, the, the Space Shuttle Challenger was destroyed in an accident very shortly after launch, and obviously all the uh, crew on board died, and, a, and a, an inquiry into the sources of the accident was launched. Uh, and actually, through a, a former student of Feynman's, um, he became actually part of the inquiry board. Uh, and it, actually his inclusion turned out to be, be very powerful because of his um, objectivity, his curiosity and his persistence in going after the, the facts. He was able to cut through a lot of the 
the bureaucracy and, and some of the fog actually that was, was thrown up around the disaster and really got to the heart of the problem. Uh, and many people will know that uh, the, the cause of the problem was eventually um, particular O-ring seals. Uh, and again, Feynman's skills as a communicator very much came to the, the fore during a famous news conference when he, he um, demonstrated using a, the, a, an O-ring and a glass of iced water that the, the physical properties of the O-ring would have been so changed by temperature that there was a risk that it wouldn't be no longer providing a, a good seal and that was the cause of the accident. There's, there's something rock and roll about him. You know, he, he's, he's an intriguing, slightly maverick kind of character and so it's no wonder that he captures uh, many people's imagination. <laughs>